Three years ago, in 11 months, July 24th, 2019, Bob Mueller sat in this room, in that chair, and told this committee, no collusion, no conspiracy, no coordination between President Trump and Russia. None. What the Democrats say? We don't care. We're going to keep going after President Trump. In fact, they didn't even wait one day. The next day, the phone call between President Trump and President Zelensky became the basis for their impeachment. Republicans said maybe, maybe instead of the never-ending attacks on President Trump, maybe the country would be better off if we figured out how the whole false Trump-Russia narrative started. After two and a half years of the Mueller investigation, 19 lawyers, 40 agents, $30 million, where they found nothing, maybe, maybe we should figure out how the whole lie started. And that's exactly what Mr. Durham has done. In his report, he told us how the dossier was funded. He told us who funded how eager the FBI was to use it, how they put the dossier in a FISA draft application just two days after receiving it. He told us that not one, not one single substantive allegation in the dossier was ever corroborated, ever validated, yet it was used used to spy on an American citizen associated with the presidential campaign. He told us there was no proper predicate for opening the crossfire hurricane investigation, and maybe most importantly, he told us the FBI, the FBI, the preeminent law enforcement agency in the world, failed, failed in its fundamental mission of adherence to the rule of law. And unfortunately, I think once again, the Democrats will say, we don't care. It doesn't matter. We're never st going to stop going after President Trump. In fact, eight days ago, we saw how far they are willing to go with the indictment of President Trump. But frankly, this shouldn't surprise us. They told us their objective. In fact, it was an agent on the case of Crossfire Hurricane who told us what their objective was. We all remember the text message from Peter Strzok where he said, don't worry, we'll stop Trump. It started with the crossfire hurricane investigation. Mr. Durham has told us how wrong that was. Now we have an indictment of a former president who's winning in every single poll by his opponent's Justice Department. And in between those two events, we had the Mueller investigation, we had impeachment, we had 51 former intel officials falsely falsely tell us the Biden laptop was Russian disinformation. We had a raid on President Trump's home, and of course, we got Alvin Bragg's ridiculous case in New York. Seven years, nothing has changed. Don't believe me? We interviewed Stephen D'Antuano, former head of the Washington field office when the Trump classified document case began. Mr. D'Antuano told the committee, we interviewed him just two weeks ago, two weeks ago today. Mr. D'Antuano told the committee that when he asked the Department of Justice, why is there new, no U.S. attorney assigned to the Trump classified document case? Headquarters said, because we're running it. He suggested the Miami field office should do the raid. Instead of sending the folks from Washington field office down to Miami, have the folks in, in the Miami field office do it. Headquarters said no. He suggested there shouldn't be a raid. Instead, they should continue to work with President Trump's lawyers. Once again, headquarters said no. Mr. D'Antuano even said, how about when we get there? When we arrive at President Trump's home, we then call his lawyer and we do the search together. Again, headquarters said no. Another interesting fact, the lawyer who turned down Mr. D'Antuano's request happens to be the same person who is alleged to have pressured the attorney representing a Trump employee about a judgeship. Nothing has changed and frankly, they're never gonna stop. Seven years of attacking Trump is scary enough, but what's more frightening any one of us could be next. In fact, it's already started. Parents at school board meetings are terrorists. Pro-life Catholics are extremists. Even journalists aren't safe. Federal Trade Commission, 13 letters. One of those letters to Twitter said, who are the journalists you're talking to? Think about that. They named four people personally. Two come and testify in front of this committee. While they're in front of this committee, Democrats are asking them to reveal their sources, violate First Amendment principles. 
One of them, Matt Taibbi, while he's sitting at that table testifying to the Judiciary Committee, the IRS is knocking on his door. Parents, Catholics, journalists, but guess who gets it the worst? Guess who gets it the worst? Whistleblowers. If you dare come forward and tell Congress what's going on, look out. They will come for you. They will take your clearance. They will take your pay. They'll even take your kids' clothes. Just ask Garrett O'Boyle, who testified in front of this committee as well. Over the next few hours, we're going to hear the facts and details about the whole false Trump-Russia narrative, the crossfire hurricane investigation, and hopefully, hopefully it will help change things at the Department of Justice. But regardless of what the Biden administration and the Garland Justice Department do, I know what Republicans in the House are committed to doing. We will work to dramatically change the FISA law, and we will do everything we can in the appropriations process to stop the federal government from going after the American people. 